And renew our mind. Renew our mind this morning, Father. Renew it as we go into your word. I thank you for that, Father. You also said to cast down every imagination that lift itself up against your wisdom. I pray today, Father, before we go into the word, that we would cast down any distractions that's in our mind. You also said to bring every thought into captivity. Oh, Father, to the obedience of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Help us to bring those thoughts that takes us away from your loving kindness. Help us to bring those thoughts that take us away from your word. The thoughts of doubts, the thoughts of fear, the thoughts of insecurity, Father. I pray that those are all be brought into the obedience of your Son. Yes, Father, let that be done. Let your word go forth today as I increase in you. As you increase, Father, and I decrease. Let your word speak to your children. Pierce their hearts, Father. Encourage them today. Edify them and lift them up. Help us as a body, Father, to be more in tune to your Holy Ghost. Help us to be led and guided by him, I pray. In the name of Jesus, that we all say, Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 and amen. amen. I'm going to read, read Psalms 47 before, before I go into, into the Word. I am a little loud because I have it closer, closer to my mouth. I could I try, try to take it down, down a little bit if you want me to, Kevin. Kevin. Or that, that will work. work. Let, Let me, me know if you hear more. Because see, I have it right here and I'm bending it down. down. Put my Bible up. At the end of this uh, verse 7, it says, For God is the king of all the earth. We hear that the enemy is the prince of air, but listen, we have a king, and he's over this earth. No matter what we see going on out there, we still have a king that's over this earth. And that is a God that we praise, that's a God that we worship, and that's a God that we put our trust in. Amen. Look at the next verse. It says, Sing, ye praises, with understanding. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the heathen. God sits upon the throne of his holiness. He reigns over the heathen. We see a lot of that out there right now, but God still reigns over them. The last, the last verse, the prince of the people are gathered together, even the people of God of Abraham, for the shields, for the shields of the earth belong unto God, and he is greatly to be exalted. Those shields that we have to protect us over this earth belongs to God. If you want to reference that on your own, just put Amos 96 and study that out for yourself about what shields are. But God is in control of everything. He is the God of this earth, and we should give him praise as what we're doing in worship. We praise his name in the good, and we praise his name in the bad. Amen? Today, I want to go about the, about the fear of the Lord and the benefits of the fear of the Lord, how he edifies his children when we fear him. I'm not talking about the spirit of fear again. I'm talking, I'm talking about, about the, the fear of the Lord in all piety or in all reverence. There's, there's such a reverence to fear God, God the, the holy God, God the, the mighty God, God that we have no thought of how great he is and how holy he is. We're so far from how he is because he has never had a beginning and he's never had the man. And that's all we can think about is our little world. But, but what, what about God and the greatness and the holiness? We have not even a thought that could match to his thoughts of how his understanding and his purity is and his holiness. When we can give that trust to God, we'll be a different person. We have to learn sometimes to step out of the way and let God take his way in our lives. Let the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. I'm talking to all out here. We get, we get caught, caught up in our own little worlds, in our own little pains, in our own little oppressions, in our own little faults, and we don't see it the way God sees it. But God has already established it because he's a sovereign God. He has already controlled it because he is a God over this earth. That means he's a God over us, amen? 
He is our God, God and we're here to worship him in who he is, in the completeness of him, in his holiness. I like that song that says in his light where even the shadows become light. That means our filth and our junk and our problems that we carry along in our lives and our doubts, and all of it's inside of us, not the outside, what people see, but what we think about on the inside and our hurts and our, our little shortcomings. Within, within that, that he is light. That, that is, is encouraging. encouraging. No, no matter, matter where we stand, stand today, God is God and he loves us with that everlasting love. And, and his, his tender mercies is always there for us. I can't, I can't believe, believe that, that loving kindness that he has for each one of us is abundantly that we won't understand, understand until we get to be with him. him. But that, that love surpasses everything that we can even think of. of. I can't imagine the love that Christ has for each one of us. But I know he loves us so much that he died for us. And I give him thanks for that. We're going to continue within his word. Amen. Blessed. We fear circumstances so much because we fear God so little. I say that within my life, within our jobs, Within, within our finances, finances within, within our, our children, children, our grandchildren. Sometimes, sometimes we fear what's going to be the outcome. outcome. We, we, we have these doubts. Is when our fear of God is gone, gone that's when those doubts, doubts come. come. But, but when, when we're in true fear of God, God then we're in his true obedience. That's what, what fear becomes. becomes. Piety, Piety and reverence for God, which shows itself in, in ready, ready obedience. To do his will has these solid advantages. It ensures true fear that produces obedience and his happiness. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. That bless is a beautiful word. It just doesn't mean happiness, but it means that we are a blessed people because we are the children of God. No matter what we see out there, we are blessed. And, and I, I guarantee, guarantee you, everybody in here, if we just took one step back and looked at our lives, and look what we live at, and look what we eat, and look what we drive, and look, we are blessed about 90% of this earth. God has blessed us because we're his children. He has not forsaken me. He has never left me. I thank God for that. Even in my mess-ups and my falls and my shortcomings, God is there. I have, I have a God, God I, can I can just repent, repent and he'll go like this. I have a God that doesn't smash me every time I mess up. I have a God that loves me and corrects me. Amen? I have a Father in the arts of heaven. Hallowed be his name. Amen? The blessings of the Lord. In Psalms 112, verse 1, Psalms 112, verse 1 says, Praise you, the Lord. Praise you, Yahuwah. Blessed. Listen. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord. You want to be blessed? Let's fear the Lord. I'm not talking about I was on a trip with someone. We had a great talk all the way down to L.A. We had to be in the car for about four hours together. He is a Hindu. He explained this whole religion to me, what Hindus, and I said, you guys have so many gods, you have Ganesh, you have Shiva, you have my different name, and I'm like, these are all your gods. He goes, but the Hindu god is only one god, like the Trinity, and then there's little gods under him. He's trying to tell me how the creation of the earth came, and how all the flood, and all this, who put it there, and why she came down, and destroyed some of the man because of the wickedness, and it was amazing how they're so caught up in one god, they say, all their, all their prayers, prayers and the, the temple, temple they go to, to but they, they serve many gods under that God. God. It was an interesting talk. I, I, I listened to him and just let my light shine. shine. I, I tell him my eyes are one, one true God. God. There, there is no other God in my life but one. one. We, we can, can make gods in our life, life but then it's, it's not a true God. God. But, but it's, it's a neat thing to listen to someone's religion to see, see that it's just, just religion. religion. See, there's, there's a, a difference, difference with us. We have a relationship. 
If we just want to make this a religion, then we become Pharisees, we become Sadducees. That's what it becomes when it becomes just a religion. Then it's not, then it, like I was saying earlier, are we obligated to come here or do we come here because our desire to hear God? See, I want to be here because of him. Not because, not because I have, have to be here. Life, Life would be easier if you didn't have to study. <laughs> Life would be easier if you didn't have to put a message and go through, through the prayers and, you know, you know thinking, thinking about all the saints and, and hearing the phone calls and doing the counseling, counseling and stuff. But, but you know, it's, it's the, the heart of love of Christ that you, you want to give, give them that little impartation. impartation. Jesus, Jesus can do it. I'm living proof that Jesus can do it. He can heal you. He can, he can deliver, deliver you from a spiritual state as well as a physical state. state. And, and most, most of the things we fight are up here, the playground for the devil. Our, Our thoughts is what destroys us. us. See, I can't see, see your thoughts. thoughts. I can, I can only, only hear your words. And, and sometimes your words explain to me your, your thoughts. And your thoughts show me your actions. If you're oppressed, it shows it the way you see but, but when, when you're in the fullness of God and you're praising him and you're happy, nothing's bothering you because you know he is the God of your life. I think we need to make him more of the God of our life because blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Do you understand every time you bless, he blesses those that fear him, it is those that follow his commandments. It is not enough just to fear God, we must love him Fear with the deter us from evil. That's what fear does. Love will lead us to obedience. See, fear keeps us from evil, and love takes us to obedience. That's strong if you really think about what's being spoken here. That's the commandments that we keep. And the more a man fears and loves God, the more obedient he will be. The more we love God, the more, the more we fear him, him the, the more obedient we will be unto his word, to follow him and let him lead us. Amen? Till at last he will delight greatly in his commandments of his maker. Isn't that a beautiful thing that we are blessed because of his word? We have his word today. We have the greatness of his holiness that we can pick up and read any time. There are countries today that don't have his word. They hide, they hide his, his word, word to just read a page of this word. In China, they go underground to read his word. We, we can pick, pick up a Bible today. You can go to most even grocery stores, stores have Bibles, or like, I'm sorry, Kmart or Walmart, whatever they have. You can find Bibles in there. You can find Bibles in the motels or hotels or wherever you stay. There's Bibles everywhere in America. We have more of the word at our fingertips today than we ever had. And we have more of a messed up nation than we ever had because of the fear of the Lord is there. Remember, the more fear you have of him, the less you are to do evil. That's the blessing. In Psalms 115, verse 13, it says this, He will bless them that fear the Lord, both strong and great. And I mean, both small and great. Those who have but little faith, little joy, little grace, little growth, yet he still will bless them. No matter if you're poor or rich, blessed are you. He's speaking, it doesn't matter if you're little or great. If you fear him, you are blessed. He is not a respecter of persons. Oh, you have a lot. Oh, you're a king. Oh, you're a servant. We're all servants. We're bond servants to Christ. And we're blessed the more we fear him. Psalms 128 verse 1 says, Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord and walketh in his way. How many did it say there? Everyone that fears him is blessed. How many of you walk around saying, My life is blessed? Got to be more than just. Yeah, there you go. I was like, getting a little worried here. Do we need more of the fear of the Lord? Only two or three of us raised our hand. I'm like, Uh oh. Maybe I need to speak this louder. We, we are blessed, blessed people. people, we are, because, because we, we fear, fear the Lord. Lord. But, but fear, fear will keep us from some of the stuff that we have in our life, too. Amen? Amen? 
some, some of the of stuff, stuff we struggle with, with when we fear the Lord. Lord. When, when people, people come fear the Lord, Lord you will see such a great repentance in the heart of people. Where has the fear of the Lord gone to? Is when we make this a social club, or we make this a donut shop, and we just come here to fellowship without the reverence for our most holy God, and this is all it becomes. But when we come in here with that heart, cleansed and washed, and our mind has been renewed, and we walk through those doors and say, Lord, what do you have for me today? What do I need to hear from the Holy Spirit? What will he guide me and lead me? What will he teach me today? That's the condition we should come in here with. Lord, what do you have for me? It might not be part of this message, but there might be a verse I read and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. And then everything else is changing because he is mending you and molding you and says, this is what you need, daughter. This is what you need, son. I'm here to speak to you the truth. See, his, his word, word is, is the, the truth. truth. Everything, Everything else is a lie. Amen? Let his truth go forth. Remember, to, to live, live in fear of God, God is obedience to him. To him. A, holy a holy life, a holy life, a holy life is the beginning of the fear of God. God. You want, you want more, more of a holy life? Fear God. God. How, How many of you would like to have prolonged like days? days? Now, now, maybe, maybe the, the ones, ones up in their 90s, 90s or 80s might say, yeah, I don't know, I'm going to get to know, get to know the Lord real quick, quick. I want to go home. home. But, but the, the Bible, Bible promises us long, prolong the days if we, we fear him. him. How many did you know that? that? It says, it says in Proverbs 10, 10 27, the fear, fear of the Lord prolongeth the days. I love that verse. God keep me here every day you want. So, so I can, I can spread, spread your gospel or be a light. light. There's, There's a day, day for me to go home. home. Could, Could it be today? today? Yes. But, but I'm standing, standing on this promise that he's going to prolong my day, day at least to his promises he gives me because he knows my last breath. breath. But, but I, I want, want my last breath to be glorifying him. Not, not myself, not my family, not my, not my job, but him. him. Oh, help, help me, Lord. Lord. Proverbs 14, 27 says that the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death is the fear of the Lord. Deuteronomy 6, 2 says this, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all of his statutes and all of his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy sons, and sons. sons. We're to, to keep, keep telling them about the fear of the Lord to the, the generation, generation to come and the generation to come after that and the generation after that. Is a little act to know about the fear of the Lord. And then it goes all the days of thy life and that thy days may be prolonged. If we stand in the fear of the Lord and we honor him and not will just bless us, it will bless our sons and our sons after the sons, the next generation, because we learn to fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, 2 says, For the length of days and long life and peace shall be added unto thee. How many of us today in this world society right now would love to have a little more peace in our life? Come on now. Amen. I, I want, want that, that peace, peace in my life, life that surpasses, surpasses all understanding. understanding. The great, great God, God of peace, peace. That's, that's who we serve. serve. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 9, 9 11 says, says this, For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and thy years of thy life shall be increased. I'm holding on to these promises. He has promised us prolonged life. But with, but with that, that promise, promise, how will we fear him? Amen? Amen. Who, how many in here would like to have more confidence, confidence? Strong confidence. Strong confidence. Well, here's, here's a, verse a verse for you. Proverbs 14, 14 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Proverbs 14, 26. God said in his fear we all have strong confidence. 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 Amen. Amen. Strong confidence. And his, his children shall have a place of refuge. 
I like that to go to that high tower. I like to have a place of refuge, a place where I can go and have peace and not worry about the fiery darts all the time. With the fear of the Lord, all that comes. Father, have we missed what it meant? Do we miss what it means to fear you? Are we, Are we taking, taking the spirit of fear and putting it with the fear of the Lord? Do we, we think, think the spirit of fear and the reverence of the Lord are the same? No. Because in the spirit of fear, there is torment. With fear, there comes torment with that spirit of fear, not the fear that you have for the Lord. That is from the enemy. He gets you to fear. Oh, I can't make it this week. Oh, where am I going to make my rent? Oh, what am I going to eat? Oh, is this church going to go on? That's called the spirit of fear. But, but when, when we, we put, put God, God back in fear of him, then we, we don't, don't worry about, about what's going to happen tomorrow. We worry, we worry about, about what's, what's going to happen today. today. Yes, yes, the Lord has spoken not just to you, but he speaks to all of us strongly. That's the fear of the Lord. It's strong confidence, the confidence in the divine character. And it is based upon a knowledge of it in the contrast to the false security, which has the foundation of ignorance. When, when you, you have, have the fear of the Lord, you have wisdom. wisdom. See, See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. wisdom. And, and I, I spoke about that a little bit last week. week. You, you want, want more wisdom? Fear God. God. You, you want, want more knowledge? Fear God. God. You, you want, want more understanding? Fear God. God. There's, There's so, so much in having such a reverence for the Holy God to serve. We do things knowing the Holy Spirit says don't do them, and we just continue to do them because of a lack of fear within us. We, we say, say things, things we ought not to say. We, we hurt, hurt people we ought not to hurt. Because of the lack of fear of God. Because the Holy Spirit spoke to you to be quiet. quiet. How, How many times the Holy Spirit says, don't say a word? word. And, and then, then five minutes later, we say something. something. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit says, be quiet, we speak. speak. That's, That's the lack of the fear of the Lord. Lord. I want, I want that, that strong confidence. confidence. I, want I want that confidence, confidence as a pastor. I want, I want that, confidence that confidence as a husband. I want that confidence as a father. And I want that confidence as a grandfather. I want that confidence as in him that I walk around with strong confidence knowing who I am in Christ. See, I know where I'm going. When we were driving down there, the guy was driving 80 to 90 and one hand on a cup of coffee and swerving everywhere. And I was like, Lord, these guys driving like Richard Petty down through the craziness of L.A. But I did tell him one thing. If we crash, I know where I'm going for sure. Do you? You can scream to your, which God you serve today. But I know the God I serve, no matter my shortcomings, I know where I'm going today. But the Lord, in his mercies and travel mercies, got me up there in one piece. And this, and this is the, the funny, funny part. part. He, didn't he didn't want to get back to work too early because we thought we'd be back around five. He drove 60 miles an hour from almost Ventura all the way home. Cars pass us left and right, so driving straight down the road. I'm like, 90 up there and 60 on the way back. I don't know if it was the prayers I had, that little control room, but 60 was kind of slow, but I kind of mentioned it a couple times and he just laughed. God, God is good. good. You, know, you know, he, he actually, actually corrected me. I told, I told him we needed the gas. We had half a tank in L.A. LA. He's, He's talking away. We're having, having a good time all the way. And we get to almost to Lita. And, and I, I said, said, is your needle on Elvis or is it on Fonzie? Fonzie? And we, we went down that thing with us. Clear on E. He goes, oh, we can go 25 miles. miles. And he, he was, was reading something else. else. I said, that's, that's not what it's about. How much gas? Oh, oh, we can go 4.5 miles. miles. Or something like that. that. We, we made it to build. build. He, he said, see that? He said, see? See? I have faith in God. That's what he told me. I have faith in God. I did it at that time. I thought, oh, boy, I'm going to be out there pushing this car or something. But no. God got us to build. What a lesson to be learned. It's how, how our lack, lack of faith in God is in little things. things. Where is our faith? Let's fear God. How about, how about you want to be satisfied with your life today? Or you just want to be satisfied with your job? You want to be satisfied with your family? You just want to be satisfied. I got a verse for that. It's in his word. It says Proverbs 19, 23. 
The, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that has it shall abide satisfied. You'll come here satisfied. You'll be at home satisfied. You'll be satisfied with the job you have. You'll be satisfied because you fear him, and he's in control. Amen? And, and guess, guess what, what he says? says? He, he shall, shall not, not be visited, visited with, with evil. That's, That's the end of that verse. verse. Wow. I am learning the fear of the Lord is more important than anything that we should, should be doing. doing. That, that trust, trust, that faith, faith everything, everything is, is in one thing, thing the fear of the Lord, of who he is. is. Psalms, Psalms 34, verse 9 says, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is none want to them that fear him. Did you hear what I said? You will not have to want for anything because God has supplied all of your need to them that fear him. Wow. Psalm 37 verse 25 says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for food or bread. I love, I love that. that. We, we have, have a God, God that takes care of us. We have, have a God, God that loves us. He feeds us. I don't see anybody in here begging. begging. I, I see, see some, some complaining complain sometimes over here, but not where we're begging, because God, God is taking care of every one of us in his way. way. Psalms, Psalms 145, verse 19 said, He, he will fulfill, fulfill the desires of them that fear him. him. He also, he also will, will hear their, their cry and will save them. them. Not, Not only will he fulfill your desires, but when you cry up to him, him in the day of trouble, he hears you. And quickly, that's, that's the God, God I serve. How, How about, about would you, you like to know the secrets, secrets of the Lord? Lord? And the, and the secrets, secrets of his word, and, and the, the secrets, secrets of the kingdom, and, and the, the secrets, secrets of what's going on in this great vast earth that we stand upon. It, it says, says here in Psalms, Psalms 25, verse 14, the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Thank you, Jesus, that I know the secrets of the Lord that are hidden to this world, but to his children, they are shown. Proverbs 3.32 says this, for the forward is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous or the righteous. His secrets are with us. He tells you the deep things when he needs to give them to you. He lets you know what his word says. And I guarantee you sometimes I can ask you who's been reading and reading and you come across the same verse and all of a sudden he speaks to you and you see it differently. That's because his word is alive or it's quickening. It's alive. It speaks, it speaks to you when he needs to speak to you. He feeds you when he needs to feed you. And he grows you when he needs to grow you. We just need to trust him. Amen. Psalms 145 verse 9. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and he will save them. Just another verse. On, On the, the secrets, secrets in Matthew 13, 13 verse, seven, verse, 11, verse 11, he answered and he said unto him, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. In Mark, it talks about this. In Luke, it talks about this. Luke 13, Mark 4, and this is all about the sower and the seed. And he says, Them that have an ear to hear. And then, and then that's when he tells, tells the people that, that were with him, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to, to those, those that are without Christ, without, without it just doesn't want to make sense, sense to them. It's, it's a, a love story to us. When you become a born again back into his kingdom, his word is alive to you. That's, that's why, why people can read this word and say, it doesn't speak, speak to me. me. Well, become his child and will. Amen? Amen. People, People read it and doubt God and then they read it and they're atheists. And they'll blaspheme this book today. They will drag it through the streets. They will mock it. But the word is still here today as it was in the beginning. And that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, he sanctified us through his word. 
Hallelujah. It's powerful. powerful. Remember, Remember that. that. Teach. Teach. Oops. That, that was powerful. powerful. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe I better move this up. up. <laughs> Put my, my head, head up. up. Psalms, Psalms 25 verse 12 says, says what, what man is he that feareth the, the Lord? Him shall he teach the way that he shall choose. You know the path that you're going in, God will teach you how to walk in that path. Hallelujah. He will teach us. That's a promise to them that fear him. He will continue to teach us. He's teaching each one of you. Each one of you could tell me a testimony how the Lord spoke to you just this week. If it was you humbly had to repent, or it was something he just showed you because you did wrong, or something you're doing right, he's patting you on the back, but, but there is, every one of us in here was taught something this, this week. week. I, believe I believe that. that. I, believe I believe every day God, God is teaching us something new. Or is teaching us what we should do. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 3 verse 32 says, For the forward man... Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Proverbs 16 verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. By mercy and truth is iniquity purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You see how he teaches us how to depart from evil is by the fear of him. True reverence for God, a holy fear of him, is a quality that God delights to see. And whenever he finds it, there he gives further instruction. Hallelujah. He teaches us. I'm thankful, I'm thankful that, that God, God teaches, teaches us to this day. I'm, I'm thankful, thankful every time I open his word, he shows me his way. way. Amen. Amen. His, his eyes, eyes are upon you. you. His, his eyes, eyes are upon you. you. It, it says, says in Psalms 33, verse 18, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. him. So, so now, now the, the eye of the Lord, Lord and upon them, them that has, has hope in his mercy, his eye is upon you. He knows, he knows your walk, he knows, knows your talk, talk he, knows he knows your stature, he knows your hairs on your head. He knows, knows you inside and out. That's love. He, he knows, knows you of your shortcomings as well as your great comings. He knows you as you are, and he loves you as you are. He's the one that's molding me, he's the one that's molding you. I thank God for that, that he still takes time out. Do we understand that? Can we? How I am one person, you're one person, you're one person, but yet he's controlling each one of us. That's the holy God that will never understand how he manages all his children. That's in a whole other atmosphere that we could never imagine with our little brain that God has given us. His thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways, but he cares for each one of us the same. He hears your prayers as he hears my prayers. He knows your walk as he knows my walk. That's a blessing to know a God like that that cares for each one of us with that loving kindness. Praise God. You know also what's encamped around us? What do we have encamped around us? Who knows? First of the day, angels. But well, let's read that verse. Psalms 34, verse 7. It says, The angels of the Lord encampeth around them that Fear him, and, and he, he delivers, delivers them. them. We, we have, have all holy angels that are encamped around us to the people that fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Me, me driving down to that LA, LA, I had to have more one or two angels encamped around me. me. I think I the word does say angels there, didn't it? <laughs> it doesn't. I had that two or three. He, he does encamp us. What, what about mercy? mercy? God has showed us his great mercy. mercy. We know, we know he's, he's a, a merciful, merciful God. God. I mean, I mean look, look at us. us. He, he loves, loves us. us. His, his mercy just pours out upon us. us. It's, it's not because, because of our goodness, it's because, because of his goodness. goodness. Psalms 103, verse 7, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the mercy towards them that fear him. Psalms 103, verse 17, but the mercies of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children of children. 
man, from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Do we understand that? No, no beginning, beginning, no end. His, His mercy is upon, upon us. It gives, it gives me hope for one, one more day. day. Not, Not that, that I can mess up, up but it gives me, me my Lord is mercy is over me. me. Sometimes, Sometimes our flesh, flesh gets, gets in there. Wives, Wives husbands, husbands, parents, we, we know, know how, how we can get mad and snap, or we, we can, can say things we shouldn't say. say. Right? right? But God's, God's mercy is everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. He corrects us, He humbles us. us. We, we repent, we ask, ask forgiveness, forgiveness, and we're, and we're sorry, sorry for the things, things we've said. But if but we, we fear the Lord, we probably wouldn't get, get to that point in this situation. situation. We, we want, want to win. win. We, we want, want to make sure our point is the strongest point out there. there. But God, God resists the proud and loves the humble. I pray that the Lord helps me to be more humble and more meek, more like Him. Instead of boasting in that, Look, look at me. me. Don't, Don't look, look at me. me. Look, look at Jesus. Jesus. Look at Jesus. Remember, Remember what this church, church is about? It's all about who? It's all about Jesus. We, we come, come here together because it's about him, and we want to learn about him. We want to restart our, our walk. Not, Not because, because we see a full church, church but because, because we can see people around us getting saved. We can see people around us life turning. We can see people growing in the Lord. We can, we can see, see people, people healed. healed. You, you pray, pray for, for them and they get healed. And don't, don't give it to me. Well, why aren't you healed? healed? That's, That's between God and me. Because his, his grace is sufficient enough for me. But it but doesn't mean I can't pray for someone else and God can't heal them. them. Amen? Because I believe in healing. Pleasure. Pleasure. Psalms, Psalms 147 verse 11 says this. this. The, the Lord, Lord takes pleasure in them that fear him, in those that have hope in his mercy. Do you understand that fear and mercy is one word? It's grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. You put fear and you put mercy together, you have grace. How beautiful. But you know he takes pleasure in us that fear him. The God that created us, that created everything we see, how beautiful it is out there. The sky is blue right now. That same God that just spoke this into existence takes pleasure in you, and he takes pleasure in me. Wow. How beautiful we are to be his children in his sight. I want you to walk out of here, pat yourself on the back, be in true confidence because you've been edified how great you are in his eyes. I read, I read all the blessings he has given you. All of them. There's, There's so, so many, many more. more. Look, Look at man's confidence in God is a pleasure to him. He loves to be trusted by his creatures. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to call upon him in the day of trouble. He wants us. I was talking to Kim earlier and I said, you know, we, we look at our lives, but look at Jesus. He is the word. He is God in flesh. But, but yet, yet he, he didn't own anything. anything. He didn't, didn't have a house. He didn't have a car. car. He, he didn't, didn't even know where his next food was coming. He didn't have no money. But look at the confidence he walked, knowing who he is and what, what he was called to do. He, he never did go without hunger. hunger. Matter, Matter of fact, fact he, he fed 5,000. And they fed 4,000. Food wasn't an issue to him because he had faith in God. He had a cloak. He could, he could sleep, sleep on it. it. He, he wasn't, wasn't worried about, about what was around him. His, his life was to do the will of the Father. As, As we, we are called to do the will of God. God. Man, when we can get in this fear, our lives would change so much more. Proverbs, I mean, Psalms 149, verse 4 says this. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beauty, I mean, with beauty and meek and salvation. He, he takes, takes pleasure, pleasure in his people. When, when we fear him and walk in righteousness, you read it through the Old Testament, you read it over and over. When the king feared the Lord, there was peace in the camp. Amen? 
There was peace and nothing was happening. The food was abundantly. When the king got her next, that was a wicked king, turned her life to him, brought idols in, didn't fear him, didn't trust him, brought in Dagon and all the other gods. What happened to the king? He got cursed. We didn't, didn't, didn't Moses write, bless her those that bless him and curse them that curses him. You, you want to be blessed, blessed bless them. See, See you, you can't, you can't curse the blessed. blessed. We, we are blessed children, children of the Most High, High God. God. The enemy can't, can't curse you. you. He, he can't, can't touch you. you. He, he can't, can't live within you. you. All he can do is put things in front of you to tempt you. you. Maybe he can throw a thought there or there or a desire. But, but he cannot have any control, control over you. you. I, I want, want us to walk out here and know, know we are the children, children of the Most High God. God. That's, That's who, who we should, should fear. fear. Not, not the enemy. Not, not what's, what's around the corner. corner. Not, not if someone's going to rob me. me. Oh, oh, is someone going to shoot me? me. Oh, oh, am I going to not make it tomorrow? Am I going to starve? Am I going to get poisoned? I can't walk around worrying about that. What I need to do is in the fear of the Lord. How am I sharing his gospel? How am I being a light to the lost? How, How is, is my, my walk? How, How are, are my neighbors? neighbors? How, How is my children? children? How's, How's the people around work? work? Am, Am I affecting them in any way? Is, is my, my light shining or on the shadow? Let's, Let's put, put God back into our life with the completeness of fear. And I'm talking in reverence for a holiness of God. Remember I state and I say it about every week, God didn't call us into uncleanness, he called us into holiness. Put, put on that, that new man, man which, which is created, created after God, God in true holiness and true righteousness. righteousness. That's, That's the way the, the new man is created. If, if we, we devote, devote to God's, God's fear, we, we shall, shall be, be delivered, delivered from, from all other fear. fear. Let me say that again. If, if we, we devote to God's, God's fear, we should be delivered from all other fear, the spirit of fear. Do you know I was thinking this morning, I didn't write it down in Revelations. Revelations, uh, I only got a couple of verses. Let me, let me, I think it's in chapter 20. Talking about the spirit of fear. Chapter 21, maybe. Let me, let me just look at that real quick. Uh, one, one of these, these chapters, chapters uh, chapter two. Well, well, maybe, maybe the Lord, Lord didn't want to share. share. Oh, it, it was in chapter, chapter 20. 20. It's, it's in, in verse 8. eight. It, says, it says, but, but the what? what? What's, What's the first, first word it says there? there? The fearful. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and the liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. What was the first one we will cast in hell? Is the fearful. That's the spirit of fear because of the enemy. We are not to have that fear. We are to have strong confidence in Christ. See, See what, what it says, says here in Matthew, Matthew 10, 28, it says, And fear them, and fear not them which can kill the body, but are able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Didn't put the spirit in there, did it? Hebrews 12, 29 says, For our God is a consuming fire. Luke 12, verse 4 says this thing, And I say unto you, my friends, Be not afraid of them that can kill the body, and afterwards have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear, fear him, which after he has killed and have power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, Fear him. God. Fear him. him. Not, not men around us, us not, not the politics, not the government, government not our president, president not Russia, Russia, not anybody else, China, China India, India. They all have strong armies. We're, we're not, not to fear them. them. We're, we're to fear God, God and watch him win the battle. battle. I've, I've read, read so many things, things about how the battle was won. won. It, was it was beautiful to see Joshua was talking to him, and he told him, let's pray to go to this battle. 
And then God, God says, tell them, no, we're not, not going to fight this war. war. And the and people, people did not listen. listen. They, they went, went up to battle, battle and guess, guess what, what happened? happened? They lost their lives and they got pushed back to the camp of God because, because they would not listen. And then, and then later, later on, God says, now is the day, go. go. And they destroy that enemy. See, it's, it's in God's timing, not our timing. Sometimes, Sometimes we just need, need to wait upon, upon the Lord. Lord. Sometimes, Sometimes we, we want to act when God says, wait. God, God says, stand, stand, we want to run. run. God, God says, be still, we're anxious. Am I, Am I talking, talking to anybody out there or am I just talking to me? I mean, I mean it's, it's so, so true. true. Sometimes, Sometimes we, we need to just wait upon the Lord. And, and if you fear him with the fear we talked about in that total piety and reverence of a holy God, a pure God, a wonderful God, you watch your life change. Because next time you want to go to the left, you fear him so much where you can hear him say, no, go to the right. No, don't go that way. No, I want you to speak to that person. I have you here because I need you here to be a witness to somebody. See, See, if, if we, we condition, condition our hearts again to go wherever we go, go even if it's lunch after this, Lord, use me as a light. If, if I can, can speak to one person, open that door. door. Through this, this week, we all should pray, pray Lord, bring someone across our path that, that we, we can, can bring, bring your word to. Word to. Let's, let's pray that. that. Let's, let's believe that. that. And, and let's, let's have a testimony next week of what God did and who he brought across your path. God is a God of love. And there's, there's nothing, nothing more pleasurable to them than salvation and the loss. He, he loves all, but he, he wants the lost to come home to him. He knows the last person that's going to call upon him. him. Then we're going to see him come back. In the tribulation, out of the tribulation, or before the tribulation, whatever your belief is, I just tell you this, be waiting for the Lord to come. Because he's coming back quickly. We used, we used to, to say, say that to pastor, pastor, but boy, boy now we can just look, look around the world and say, ouch, look, look at what's happening. happening. Look, look at the rampant of evil. Look, look at how this foundation of this country was built upon God. God. Now it's proclaimed. I, I see videos of them dragging Satan, Satan big, big balloons through parades. You see, see these other parades of just perverseness and just craziness, and they got little kids out there watching it. And we wonder what's the matter with our society. If, if parents would put the fear of the Lord back into their house, we would have a better society. We would put God, you know, <clears throat> the problems that happen with, uh, you can look at the schools. When we took prayer out of the schools, you see nothing but a spike up. Go look at the statistics. Before the prayer, you had little hiccups. After the prayer, boom, three, four hundred percent of, of more, more pregnancies, pregnancies more, more drugs, drugs, more suicides, more everything, more everything you can you think of when we took prayer out of school. When we take prayer out of our family time, when we take prayer out of our life, when we forget to pray, we need to spend more time in prayer as loved ones. We need to be on our face more before the Lord so we can hear what he has to tell us. We need to be praying for one another. Amen? And I know this body does. We, we pray, pray for each, each other. other. We, we write down, down a prayer list. We, we want, want to pray. pray. We, we want, want to have the fear of God in his body as well as out of his body. body. The, the fear, fear isn't just in these four walls. walls. The fear is within, within this body. body. The, the walls, walls is a building, building but we're the church. church. It, it could be a small church, church but it's a mighty church. church. See, see, we don't see what's going on out there, but God does. We don't know who you're speaking to and who you're touching. Just because, because they don't walk through this door, door don't mean you're changing, changing a lot of people's lives. lives. You don't you know, know who's, who's watching you besides God. God. There, there are so many people that are watching you that don't know God. God. Most, Most of the time, they want to see you mess up. up. But, but a lot of times, they're just watching you because they have that envy of what you have. They want to know, why does that person have so much peace? Why, through all the turmoil of what's going on, they have peace. They have joy. They have happiness. Remember in Psalm 1-1, it says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, 
nor is seed in the seed of the scornful. Bless is him that has nothing to do with that. Next verse says this, but he takes the delight in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night. See, his delight is in God. He spends time with him day and night in his law. The next, next verse says, says I'm going to tell you how this person is going to be. He is going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who will bear fruit in his season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he shall do, he shall prosper. That's what my Bible says. Blessed is that man when we take our away from evil and we back to the fear of God. We are blessed. And, and that's, that's what, what we, we talk, talk about, about fear today. It's not, not to put fear, fear upon you that you're doing wrong. It's to put how blessed are you because you fear him. him. This, this is where you walk out and say, yeah, I'm a child of God. God. And, and I, I do fear, fear him, him and that's, that's why, why I'm blessed. blessed. I am blessed because of God. Hallelujah. He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But remember this, you will inherit the earth. Because he is the God. He will, he will take, take through, he will, he will take, take care of you through times of troubles. No matter what storm you're in, God will take you through it. He will calm the seas around you when people can't understand, but he will do it because he's God. All he says is this, have a little faith in me. See, he even told the apostles, a little faith, even a mustard seed of faith can remove a mountain. Lord, give me a couple of mustard seeds, if that's what it takes. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, Father, I thank, I thank you for your word that it has gone forth. forth. What, what a blessing it is to learn how to fear you and what benefits and what things you throw upon us that we do fear you. I love that. Learning all the good things of your precious word, how you love your children so much you take care of them that fear you. Help us to be more obedient to your word, Father. Help us to be a light out in this world. As, As we, we go, go out, Father, Father put a hedge of protection around each one of us in here. Again, I pray for us because we do fear you that you keep giving those holy angels charge of us. Let us be a true witness to the gospel, Father. Bless our children, bless our grandchildren, bless our loved ones, Father. Bless all the ones that couldn't be here, bless the ones that do hear your word. Bless this community for the pastors that are preaching the pure gospel today. Bless them, Father. Bless this nation as we humble ourselves and pray as we seek your face, Father. As we turn from our wicked ways, you said you would heal this land. Let it start here, Father, as we repent of anything that keeps us away from you. Help us to have more of a repentant heart, Father, for the things that don't please you. Remove it far from us and teach us, I pray. As your word says, as we fear you, you will teach us. Show us more of your mysteries. I thank you. I thank, I thank you. you. What, what a pleasure, pleasure it is to serve a mighty God, God as you are. are. What, what a great, great thing to be able to stand up here and say, I'm the child of the Most High God. God. That's, That's something that I can boast, boast upon, is you. And I boast upon you. Let all this glory go unto you, Father. And in the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. Amen.